Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today I started a project that is a little outside of my wheelhouse. So I have woven uh, lots of cloth and I've woven rugs but I have never been one for weaving rag rugs. Um, I personally don't care for the uh, look of a rag rug but uh, I decided to try a particular pattern that I found in one of the handwoven magazines. So um, this is my first rag rug. So I thought that I would uh, take this journey with you guys. So here is the first thing that I needed to do. And that was to cut the strips of uh, material into three quarter inch widths. Now I didn't want to go out and buy like five yards of you know, five different materials to get nice long lengths. So I did some research and found that you can um, cut uh, the material in such a way that you get a continuous, um, basically a continuous loop that advances and it, it behaves like a one continuous long piece. So I was able to take a piece of material that's say half a yard uh, wide and get um, 30 yards worth of uh, three quarter inch strips out of it. So I thought I would demonstrate that and then um, I'll also go through the whole weaving process and um, you can critique me because this is my first rag rug. So let's take a look at what I've got so far. All right, so here is my material. And it's a, uh, let's see if I can open this up. So it's a really pretty paisley. And um, I bought, uh, I think, two yards of it, which is what the pattern called for. Um, and then I, after I pre-shrunk it, I folded it so that the right sides were together and the selvages were on either side were together and the cut end was um, at the top. So let's see if I can open this up a little bit. All right, so, and then I, I made sure that this was a straight edge. So I trimmed it and then I sewed a, a 3 8 inch seam along there, uh, along the whole top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the uh, strips. And to do that, the pot or the instructions that I was able to figure out on YouTube um, says to take the material and put the sewn edge at the top like so. Okay. And I'm going to um, line up my selvage at the edge. And then I'm going to take the folded edge and I'm going to fold this up so that it is uh, three quarters of an inch below my sewn seam line. Let's see if I can get that situated. And fortunately, my cutting mat is just wide enough to do that. And I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this way. I think that'll be easier for me to cut. All right. So my selvage is nice and even. I've got my um, sewn line up there at the top. Well, it's to the side for you now. Um, and what I'm going to do 
is the first thing I need to do is square everything up and then I'm going to uh, cut this selvage off. And I think I'll we'll cut it at a half an inch. And I'm using a rotary cutter and mat. Okay. So you don't want to use um, the selvage on a piece of material. So move this over so I have a little bit of room. And so now I'm going to line the edge of the material up at three quarters of an inch on my ruler. And I'm going to cut up till I just cut through this folded um, edge. I'm not going to cut all the way off the end. Okay. Now, without moving any of the material, I'm just going to move my straight edge over another three quarters of an inch. Okay, and do the same thing. slipped a little. So I'm just going to kind of run that up again because I'm not sure that I got all the way through the layers. I do have a new blade in my rotary cutter so that's kind of important. So we'll just continue on doing this um, until I get to the end of my material. Okay, so I am on my last one, and so I'm going to go all the way through. And I didn't use up all of it because I almost forgot that um, there are uh, narrower strips, the 3 8 inch strips that I need to make also. Um, so we will do those and I need 14 of those. These are really narrow looking. Okay, so I have all of the um, strips cut, and you'll notice that um, they are still connected here at the top. So what I'm going to do is we will open this up and separate it along that seam line. 
And if you just kind of thread your hand through there. So here is where the magic happens. So you grab a pair of scissors and on the first one, and I probably didn't cut up that far enough. Um, yeah, I really didn't, but it'll be fine. So on the first one, you're going to cut from the edge of where you uh, sewed the two pieces together at an angle down to your first vertical cut. And just let that fall to the wayside. Now, on each successive one, you're going to go and cut from this side to this side on a diagonal. So we'll just and be sure you don't cut Just cut to that vertical cut line. And what this does is it creates a continuous length of material with a little angled jog. And this will allow you to weave with a continuous piece of material and not have to um, not have to splice in um, material constantly uh, or by long lengths of material so that you have you know long um, pieces to work with and the other way that I had seen um, to do this was you can do a similar thing without um, sewing them together but it creates more of a of a sharp jog in it. Now this last one you do just like on the very first one and you cut to the salvage of your piece. And so now you have a big pile of uh, material strips but it is one big long piece. And you can wind this onto your rag shuttle, or um, I might actually wind this onto a, a big bobbin um, so that I can, because this is pretty thin. So there you have it. Um, so I've got a bunch more to cut here, and then I will... Um, measure out the warp and start uh, weaving this rug. Okay, you can see that I have uh, started weaving the rag rug and um, I've gotten about two repeats into it. There's six repeats total. And I just have to say, for those of you who weave rag rugs, I am so impressed by you guys because <laughs> This is not easy. Um, I guess I was kind of thinking that, you know, it would go quick because it's five and a half picks per inch. And, but no, it's hard. It takes a long time for each pick because you have to make sure that the pattern is on the top 
and the strings are driving me nuts. The all the fraying of the this 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 fraying. Oh my god. Um. I am the type of person that likes neat and orderly, and uh, yeah, this is driving me insane. So, uh, but I will persevere. Um, I have my scissors, and <laughs> I am just kind of trimming them as I go along, and uh, hopefully when I get all done, um, I will not be insane. Uh, but. It is a lot of fun, and I do like the way it's turning out. Uh, so we will persevere and continue on. Um, so I need to uh, end this. So I, I cut this last. This was the last pick in this repeat for this color. And so now I need to tuck this end. And um, as I mentioned before, I have never woven a rag rug, so I have no idea if I'm doing it right or doing it wrong. So if I'm doing something wrong and you know that, please let me know because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so uh, I have my treadle tracker set up here um, on my left, so you'll see me kind of uh, messing with that over here occasionally. Um, so one of the things that I'm doing, and I have no idea if, if this is right or wrong, um, it's probably wrong. When I end like this, rather than tucking this tail into the same shed, um, I've got it tapered here at the end and, um, I'm, I'm kind of twisting it around like this. And then I'm tucking it into the next shed and then bringing the new weft in on top of that with a tail that is also tapered. So I, I don't know if that's right, wrong, or indifferent, but it, it seemed... The best way for me um, and really that's all you can do uh, the other thing that I figured out is when I demonstrated um, cutting the fabric um, I guess I didn't realize how often these seams would show up and how they would kind of um, stick out or be bumps in my weaving. So in some instances, I'm like this light green, I don't have, I didn't have a long section of it. And so um, I've got maybe one yard sections. Uh, so I've got a seam in every section and in some instances where it's coming up and looking crappy uh i'm i'm cutting that seam out and i'm overlapping them with a with a tapered end um i can see how if you did a lot of these that uh, having a huge stash of fabric would be helpful and um, so you could just have uh, have the tapered ends because that's what I ended up doing on one of these is uh, I didn't have enough fabric so I went down and I got some more and I bought like three yards of it and so then I have three yard sections which is still not as good as probably some of you that do rag rugs like to do, but it's what I could afford. Um, and not even so much afford as, I don't know if I'm gonna do a lot of rag rugs uh, in my future. And 
Um, I don't have a whole lot of room to store stuff. So, so th see, this is what takes so much time is twisting the selvage so that you get a good selvage and then twisting the fabric um, and then finding these big old long strings and maybe maybe I'm not supposed to cut those out. Maybe they'll eventually disappear. Um, what I can tell you is I am probably going to cut one of my work threads eventually because it's just dangerous. Um, so this uh, this color doesn't really have a back or a front, so I don't have to be quite as picky about how it's sitting, but I still am. All right, um, then we go to the paisley. So that's this. Uh, so we, so see there I've got a, so I will just trim that off. There. Where is the front of this one? Okay. So we'll go ahead and twist this one around. Put it through. Oops, that's the same shed. Okay. Um, my next shed is one. Oh, that was the other thing. So, maybe, maybe you all know this. Um, I've worked on jack looms and a counter march loom. My counter march loom, um, I usually thread it as if it were a rising shed loom because half the sheds go up, half for, I should say, the sheds that I say go up, go up, the sheds I say go down, go down. And when I'm looking at a draft, if I mark those on, I need to, Stop talking for a second because I don't know what I did here. Um, this goes under here. All right, there. Um, there we go. Well, now that's odd. I am pushing on two, or no, one. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, um, so when I write a draft or read a draft, I read it as if it's for a rising shed loom. Um, and so I put this draft into my weaving software and it's a draft from the hand woven magazine. Um, but when I put it in, uh, it didn't look it wasn't, the profile wasn't looking right. And um, so I thought, well, I've never done a rag rug. It's a um, weft faced weave maybe. And so maybe that's what's causing the problem. Um, so I'll go ahead and start weaving it. Uh, I know that it's right. I can look at the magazine and I can see that it's right. So I'm probably just doing something wrong or looking at it incorrectly. So I start weaving the first uh, pattern section and it doesn't look anything like the photograph. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Obviously, I've done something wrong. Um, so, I looked a few more times. I looked on the website for an errata. Um, couldn't find anything. Finally, I had the presence of mind to look on the underside of the weave. 
and it looks right under there. So I'm like, okay, there's the problem. This must be written for a falling shaft loom or a sinking shaft loom. And um, so I looked again throughout, I read the entire article on the pattern in the magazine. Nothing in there said anything about it being a sinking shed loom or a sinking shed pattern. And, but the author does have a blog and I went to her blog. I looked at uh, the article that she had written on her blog about this pattern. And at the very end, there's a note that says, please note this draft is written for a sinking shed loom. If you want to use it on a jack loom or a rising shed loom, you need to tie up the blank spaces. So there you have it. It's pro or mystery solved, but I knew that's what it was. It's just, it would have been nice if that had been written in the handwoven magazine. Anyways, there you go. Um, so uh, I did, I didn't have to change any of my treadle tie-ups. What I ended up doing is um, I re-numbered the treadles on the bottom and under my loom. I re I renumbered the treadles uh, because all of the tie-ups were there. They were just in a different order. Uh, because this is a rose path and it has a plain weave and a twill and so I was able to just do some renumbering and get everything I need. Um, I also uh, went to the hardware store to try and find a weight for my beater because it really doesn't have enough weight. Um, and nobody had anything in stock. Uh, they're all out of everything. So um, I'm having to really wail on it. But the weather here is in the teens, which is very unusual for Seattle. Um, and so I'm not able to get my exercise that I normally do. I usually go out and walk three miles with my neighbor every day. Um, but I'm sorry, I'm not going out and walking in 16 degree weather. So um, this is my exercise. I do like the way this is turning out. Um, I like the pattern. I love the pattern. Um, I I kind of wish for my first rag rug I had picked a non-pattern.
cut more yellow strips. All right, um, so we're coming into the home stretch. And I am so glad <laughs> because this is, this is a workout, I have to say. Um, let's see if we go I have to cut a couple more yellow strips because This is the part that drives me nuts, is it folds over and I don't want it to. And I need to make it right. All right, two inches. So now um, I'm going to cut this tail and do three eighths inch uh, with the same work, uh, same uh, yarn that I used for the warp. And that will finish off the hem. Thank you. 
that is three eighths right there. So we will cut that. to put in um, a scrap cutter. There we have it. Um, so we'll go ahead and cut it off. And um, I still need to hem it and wash it and hopefully cut off some of these threads that are driving me insane. Um, but uh, I'm pretty glad, pretty happy with the way it turned out um, so far. And I enjoyed weaving it. Uh, I think I will do uh, some other rag rags. I'll probably stick with just plain weave and not um, any patterning because the patterning really just is a lot more challenging than what I'm interested in doing for rag rags. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching me weave this rug. And if you would like to give me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment uh, down below and give me some pointers on how to do rag rugs because I obviously am not an expert at it. So um, thanks for watching and happy weaving.